I welcome back. We're in the book of Amos, and we're going to read it all the way through in one sitting. It isn't very long. I just looked to see how many chapters. <laughs> I forgot that soon. Nine chapters. Um, yeah, so let me open up in prayer and then read, um, like I said yesterday or when I read Hosea. Um, I'm going to read it straight through and because I don't know... Um, so much to be clear as to what um, I'm explaining or what my commentary, I don't want it to be uh, off and then steer everybody in the wrong direction. So I'd rather read it and I for certain, say something. Um, so please let's start in prayer by just saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being here today, for giving us another chance at life, another blessing of breath in our lungs another blessing of family and friends if they are near near us may we give you thanks for them and if they are not may we lift them up i pray that all is well with the viewer in their circumstance in their home their place of work with their children with their spouses as they go out about their day and take care of business father god may we invite you with us may you be with them may you direct our our paths lord May you be with those that are suffering also father and i pray that they call on you i pray that they turn to you for the answer, for your help, for your rescuing, Father God. And I just pray to give you thanks for all your blessings. And I ask that you're in this reading, Lord. I ask that you still our hearts and our minds so that we can understand, receive. And I pray one day share your word. It is in your name I pray. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Chapter 1. The words of Amos, who was among the sheep breeders of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. And he said, The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds mourn, and the top of Carmel withers. Judgment on the nations. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Damascus, and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with implements of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazel, which shall devour the palaces of Benedad. I will also break the gate bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the valley of Avon, and the one who holds the scepter from Beth Eden. The people of Syria shall go captive to Ker, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they took captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, which shall devour its palaces. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and the one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God, for three transgressions of Tyre and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they delivered up the whole captivity of Adam. And do not remember the covenant of brotherhood, but I will send a fire upon the wall of Tyre, which shall devour its palaces, thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Adam and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because he pursued his brother with the sword and cast off all pity. His anger tore perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire upon Taman, which shall devour the palaces of Basra. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of the people of Ammon, and four for four. You see the, the what is it, the pattern here? Um, they will meet judgment for their transgressions. And um, let me continue again with the commentary. I will not turn away its punishment, because they ripped open the woman with child in Gilead that they might enlarge their territory. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it shall devour its palaces, amid shouting in the day of battle, and a tempest in the day of the whirlwind. Their king shall go into captivity, he and his princess together, says the Lord. Chapter two. two. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Moab, and four for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because he burned the bones of the king of Adam to lime. But I will send a fire upon Moab, and it shall devour the palaces of Kiriath. Moab shall die with tumult, 
with shouting and trumpet sound, and I will cut off the judge from its midst and slay all its princes with him, says the Lord. Judgment on Judah, thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah and four for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they have despised the law of the Lord and have not kept his commandments. Their lies lead them astray, lies with their fathers followed, which their fathers followed. But I will send a fire upon Judah, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Judgment on Israel. Thus says the Lord. For three transgressions of Israel, and four for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they sell the righteous for silver, and the poor for a pair of sandals. They pant after the dust of the earth, which is on the head of the poor, and pervert the way of the humble. A man and his father go in the, in to the same girl to defile my holy name. They lie down by every altar on clothes taken in pledge and drink the wine of the condemned in the house of their God. Yet I, yet it was, I was destroyed, the Amorite before them. Let me do that again. This is verse 9. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness, the Exodus. To possess the land of the Amorite, I raised up this, the sum of your sons as prophets and some of your young men as Nazarites. Is it not so, O you children of Israel, says the Lord? But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Do not prophesy. Behold, I am weighed down by you as a cart full of sheaves is weighed down. Therefore, flight shall perish from the swift, the strong shall not strengthen his power, nor shall the mighty deliver himself. He shall not stand who handles the bow, the swift of foot shall not escape, nor shall he who rides a horse deliver himself. The most courageous men of might shall flee naked in that day, says the Lord. Authority of the prophet, Prophet's Message, Chapter 3 Hear the word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Will a bird fall into a snare on the earth where there is no trap for it? Will a snare spring up from the earth if it has caught nothing at all? If a trumpet is blown in a city, will not the people be afraid? If there is calamity in a city, will not the Lord have done it? Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals a secret to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Punishment of Israel's sins. Verse 9. Proclaim in the palaces at Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble on the mountains of Samaria. See great tumults in her midst and the oppress within her, for they do not know to do right, says the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, An adversary shall be all around the land. He shall sap your strength from you and your palaces shall be plundered, thus says the Lord. As a shepherd takes from the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out who dwell in Samaria, in the corner of a bed and on the edge of a couch. Hear and testify against the house of Jacob, says the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day I punish Israel for their transgressions. I will also visit destruction on the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. I will destroy the winter house along with the summer house. The houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, says the Lord. Chapter 4 Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, Bring wine, let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness, Behold, the days shall come upon you, when he will take you away with fish hooks, and your posterity with fish hooks, you will go out through broken walls, each one straight ahead of her, and you will be cast into ha into Harmon, says the Lord. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. 
Proclaim and announce the free will offerings. For this you love. You children of Israel, says the Lord God. So do it with love. The tithing and the sacrifices. Israel did not accept correction. Isn't that something? The messenger is telling him exactly what the message is from God. And here it is, the title. Israel did not accept correction. Verse 6. Also, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your in all your places. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I also withheld rain from you. When there were still three months to the harvest, I made it rain on one city. I withheld rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, the part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, your vineyards, your fig trees, and your olive trees, the locusts devoured them. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I sent among you a plague after the manner of Egypt. Your young men I killed with a sword. Along with your captive horses, I made the stench of your camps come up into your nostrils. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I overthrew some of you as God overthrew Saddam and Gomorrah. And you were like a firebrand plucked from the burning. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. For behold, he who forms mountains and creates the wind, who declares to man what his thought is, and makes the morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. Chapter 5. A Lament for Israel. Hear this word which I take up against you, a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel has fallen. She will rise no more. She lies forsaken on her land. There is no one to raise her up. For thus says the Lord God, the city that goes out by a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which goes out by a hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. A call to repentance, verse 4. For thus says the Lord to the house of Israel, Seek me and live. But do not seek Bethel, nor enter Gilgal, nor pass over to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it. With no one to quench it in Bethel, you who turn justice to wormwood and lay righteousness to rest in the earth. He made the Pleiades and Orion. He turns the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark as night. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. He rains ruin upon the strong so that the fury comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who rebukes in the gate and they abhor the one who speaks uprightly. Therefore, because you tread down the poor and take grain taxes from him, though you have built houses of hewn stone, yet you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink wine from them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. Afflicting the just and taking bribes, diverting the poor from justice at the gate. Therefore, the prudent keep silent at that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. So the Lord God of hosts will be with you as you have spoken. Hate evil, love good, establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, the Lord God of hosts, the Lord says this, There shall be welling in all the streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, they shall call the farmer to mourning, and skillful lamenters to wailing. In all vineyards there should be welling, for I will pass through you, says the Lord. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord, for what good is the day of the Lord to you? It will be darkness and not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or as though he went into a house, learned, I'm sorry, leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast days, and I do not savor your sacred assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. That's so sad. <clears throat> I will not accept them, nor will I regard your flat, your fat and peace offerings. Take away from me 
the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments, but let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years, O house of Israel? You also carried Succoth, your king, and Chun, your, your idols, the star of your gods, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will send you into captivity beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Uh, chapter 6, Warnings to Zion and Samaria. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion and trust in Mount Samaria. Notable persons in the chief nation to whom the house of Israel comes. Go over to Cana and see. And from there go to Hamath the Great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are you better than these kingdoms? Or is their territory greater than your territory? Woe to you who put far off the day of doom. Who cause the seed of violence to come near. Who lie on beds of ivory. Stretch out on your couches. Eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall. Who sing idly to the sound of string instruments. And, e and invent for yourselves musical instruments like David who drink wine from bowls and anoint yourselves with the best ointments but are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. They're, they're like uh, re relaxed while everything else he's saying is in turmoil for the lands around them. Verse 7. Therefore, they're, therefore they shall now go captive as the first of the captives and those who recline at banquets shall be removed. The Lord God has sworn by himself the Lord God of hosts says, I abhor the pride of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore, I will deliver up the city and all that is in it. Have you ever been uh, wanting to express something you're so excited or urgent, like it's an urgent message and it's, it just seemed like nobody was getting it and you felt like you're the only one that's trying to get out from whatever it is. It could be a fire, it could be you want a million bucks and it's just like, am I in a dream? I feel like, like he's saying what, what, their living situation is and where they're at fault what um their transgressions their sins and it's almost like he's saying in a way like don't you get it like here it is these are all your um your charges against you anyway i'm sorry so let me continue uh i'll read eight again the lord god has sworn by himself the lord god of hosts says i abhor the pride of jacob and hate his palaces therefore i will deliver up the city and all that is in it then it shall come to pass that if ten men remain in one house, they shall die. And when a relative of the dead, with one who will burn, I'm sorry. And when a relative of the dead, with one who will burn the bodies, picks up the bodies to take them out of the house, he will say to one inside the house, Are there any more with you? Then someone will say, None. And he will say, Hold your tongue, for we dare not mention the name of the Lord. I'm just sad because they're picking up bodies in ukraine they're looking for bodies with the bridge that collapsed they're collecting bodies in gaza and moss and and there's no right side i'm not i'm that's my opinion nobody is more right than the other i think it's a war over territory and always wanting to control so uh, that just makes me think of that. I'm sorry. Just a moment for them. The Lord be with them. Verse 11. For behold, the Lord gives a command. He will break the great house into bits and the little house into pieces. Do horses run on rocks? Does one plow there with oxen? Yet you have turned justice into gall and the fruit of the righteousness into wormwood. You who rejoice over Lodabar, who say, have we not taken Karnaim for ourselves by our own strength? But behold, I will raise up a nation against you, O house of Israel, says the Lord God of hosts. And they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamath to the valley of Arabah. Vision of Locusts, chapter 7. Thus the Lord God showed me. Behold, he formed locust swarms at the beginning of the late crop. Indeed, it was the late crop after the king's mowing. And so it was when they had finished eating the grass of the land that I said, O Lord God, forgive, I pray. Oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. So the Lord relented concerning this. It shall not be, said the Lord. Thus the Lord God showed me. Behold, the Lord God called for conflict by fire, and it consumed the great deep and devoured the territory. Then I said, O Lord God, cease, I pray. 
Oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. So the Lord relented concerning this. This also shall not be, said the Lord God. This is Amos pleading. Vision of the plumb line. Verse 7. Thus he showed me, behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them any more. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words, for thus Amos has said. Jeroboam, this is Amos relaying the message. Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive from their own land. Then Amaziah said to Amos, Go, you seer, flee to the land of Judah. There eat bread and there prophesy, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is the royal residence. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet. Okay, don't mess this up. But I was a sheep breeder and a tender of a sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not spout against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Your wife shall be a harlot in the city. Your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by survey line. You shall die in all defiled land. And Israel shall, shall surely be led away captive from his own land. Vision of the Summer Fruit, Chapter 8 Thus the Lord God showed me, Behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what do you see? So I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come upon my people Israel. I will not pass by them any more, and the songs of the temple shall be welling in that day, says the Lord God. <laughs> Many dead bodies everywhere, they shall be thrown out in silence. Hear this, you who swallow up the needy and make the poor of the land fail saying when will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain and the sabbath that we may trade wheat making the ephah small and the shekel large falsifying the scales by deceit that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals even sell the bad wheat the lord has sworn by the pride of jacob surely i will never forget any of their works shall the land not tremble for this and everyone mourn who dwells in it all of it shall swell like the river heave and subside like the river of egypt and it shall come to pass in that day says the lord god that i will make the sun go down at noon and i will darken the earth in broad daylight daylight i will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation i will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head i will make it like mourning for an only son and its end like a bitter day Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Um, man shall not live on bread alone, but the word of God. And he's saying right here is when he takes it away and he says, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Could you imagine? No hope, no love, no, no um, hope. That's my opinion. Let me keep going. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. They'll be looking for like, what is the secret to life? Where's the fountain of you? That is what they, that quest would be like. 13. In that day, the fair virgins and strong young, young men shall faint from thirst. Those who swear by the sin of Samaria, who say, as your God lives, O Dan, and as the way of Bathsheba lives, they shall fall and never rise again. He did this in Ezekiel. Um, like I said, I don't want to say too much about the dates, like what the timelines were. You can go back and look them up. And because um, it's different, these books are in different perspectives. And so you have to go and see where it fits in the timeline. But um, we, we read that where the tribes met their judgment and where there was death all over the land. And, um, and then he restored them in the end of Ezekiel. But I, I just wanted to bring that up. So if you're wondering, like, when did this happen? When did he do it? He, 
he uh, did it and um, let me just keep going chapter 9 the destruction of Israel I saw the Lord standing by the altar and he said strike the doorposts that the thresholds may shake and break them on the heads of them all. I will slay the last of them with a sword. He who flees from them shall not get away, and he who escapes from them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, from there my hand shall take them. Though they climb up to heaven, from there I will bring them down. And though they hide themselves on the top of Carmel, from there I will search and take them. Though they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, from there I will command the serpent, and it shall bite them. Though they go into captivity before their enemies, from there I will command the sword, and it shall slay them. I will set my eyes on them for harm and not for good. The Lord God of hosts, he who touches the earth and it melts, and all who dwells there mourn. All of it shall swell like the river and subside like the river of Egypt. He who builds his layers in the sky and has founded his strata in the earth, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. And we're in the last chapter. Chapter 9, verse 7. Are you not like the people of Ethiopia to me, O children of Israel, says the Lord? Did I not bring up Israel from the land of Egypt, the Philistines from Kaphtor, and the Syrians from Kerr? Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Yet I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For surely I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve. Yet not the smallest grain shall fall to the ground. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say the calamity shall not overtake nor confront us. Israel will be restored. Like in Ezekiel, on that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnants of Adam. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. I will bring back the captives of my people, Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat fruit from them. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. Thanks for hanging out with me and diving in the word some more. As always, take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.